Hey everyone, and welcome to the 12th part in cracking ML interviews. So, here is the problem. Explain ROC, which stands for Receiving Operating Characteristic, and AOC, which stands for Area Under the Curve. Ok, so let's look at the ROC. What it does is to plot a graph which measures two things. On the x-axis, we have the false positive rate. So the false positive rate, which measures the proportion of negatives which are classified as positives. And if we were to write the formula for that, it would be Fp divided by Fp plus Tn. So the number of false positives divided by the sum of false positives plus the number of true negatives. Ok, and the other thing that we are measuring here is the true positive rate. So the TPR, which measures the proportion of actual positives that are correctly identified. And the formula for that is TPR equals to TP divided by TP plus FN. So the number of true positives divided by the number of true positives plus the number of false negatives. And what we do next in ROC is to measure the performance for different thresholds. And we start with a threshold equal to 1. And for this specific threshold, the number of positives will be equal to 0. Why? Because in order for a sample to be classified as positive, then its probability has to be higher than the threshold. And because no probability is higher than 1, then we can't label any sample as positive. So both the false positive rate and the true positive rate will be equal to 0. And if we were to plot this point on this graph, it will be just here, at 0, 0. What we do next is to slightly decrease the threshold and measure the performance of the model again. And if we do that, let's say that we decrease the value of the threshold by 0 0.1, then our next threshold will be equal to 0 0.9. And what we will observe if you have a reasonably trained model is that in this case, the FPR increases by a bit, while the true positive rate increases by quite a lot. And why is this happening? Well, because in this case, we are classifying samples we are confident about. So samples that have obtained a probability of being positive, like 0 0.95 or 0 0.99 and so on. And if we were to plot this point on this graph, it will be, let's say, somewhere around here. So again, a sudden jump in the true positive rate and just a small increase in the false positive rate. Next, we continue to decrease the values of our thresholds. So we measure the performance of our model for thresholds like 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 and so on until we measure a threshold of 0. And what we observe if we do that is that the rate of gains in true positive rate starts to decrease while the rate of the gains in false positive rate starts to increase. So our graph will start to look something like this. So let's say that we have this value here. So again, a smaller gain in TPR, but a bigger one on VPR and so on. And it will start to resemble a logarithmic curve. So yeah, something like that, let's say. And here, on this point here, where you use a threshold equal to zero, both the VPR and TPR will be equal to one. So the threshold equal to zero will get a VPR and TPR equal to one. Why? Because we classify everything as positive. So the number of true negatives and false negatives will be equal to zero in both cases. And now we can move to the next part and explain the area under the curve. Which curve, you may ask? Well, the area under this curve here that we have obtained 
by measuring the performance of our model using different thresholds. So this is the area under the curve. In this number, area under the curve is a number between 0 and 1, which can indicate the performance of our model. And the higher it is, the better our model is. Now, there are two important values, I would say. So the first one is when you obtain an area under the curve equal to 0 0.5. And on this graph, it would look something like this blue line here. Well, in this case, our model is no better than random sampling. And everything below this line, it means that our model is very bad and something is wrong with it. And the second important value for the area under the curve is 1, which means that we have obtained a perfect model. And this looks in our graph like a horizontal line at y equals to 1. And that's basically it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!